I can't win with the argument. One, a bunch of people in England think vaccines don't work. There's no measles. So now we vaccinate against measles and we just about eradicate measles. Now we have a pocket in San Diego of 11 cases and unvaccinated people. You can't have it both ways. Either the vaccines work and prevent the spread of measles. And now they're worried, oh, maybe measles because of a doctor's claim on 18 and 19 pages in England and 98 proven to be wrong is the trigger. I can't win either way, can I? No, and this is a real problem. And it's really, this is a, it's a media war. It's a matter of getting our information out. It's a matter of teaching people what we, what we know and what we have facts on because people don't know. And they just, they read and they see what's going on on TV and, and they're very much influenced by that. So in other words, the diseases are bad. We don't have any evidence, and believe me, if I find anything, I'd be the first one to stop vaccinating. Sure. Okay. There's a, there's a, there's a vaccine out, which I think is a great idea, called Gardasol. Mm -hmm. Yet I found out there were some questionable deaths. Right. And I'm holding off for a period of time. But I did my homework. Only one I can't explain off. And the one is a 12 and a half year old girl who got the shot and died two and a half hours later. Right. Now, that could be the kid had something unrelated, but we have to report anything that close to a vet. She could have been on birth control pills, for whatever the reason. She could have had a stroke because of something else. But mm. I have concerns. I held off a little bit. I'm going to right. go back very shortly and give all the goddess all again. But you can't find fault the doctor having caution. I can't find anywhere from good sources right. saying vaccines cause autism. No, especially these vaccines that we've been using for such a long time, and they are really safe, and they're really helping people every day. So, in other words, the disease might be so bad, even if there was a slight incidental risk. We look at risk-benefit ratio. The risk of disease is horrible. The risk from a, a, a one in five million risk factor we take in consideration because... There's no vaccine that's a free ride. No, nothing's perfect. I mean, there is no, uh, the, like you say, there is no free lunch. And any medication, anything that you put in your body, you know, has the risk of having an effect, uh, a negative effect or a side effect. However, um, you know, people have treat themselves all the time for disorders that they have. And, and the reason you do so is because the benefit just way outweighs the risk. And if someone said to you, uh, don't give the vaccine, Whatever their reason, they said it. Give them, them my number. I would love to speak to them for where their facts came from. Uh, you can call me anytime. I wouldn't be upset. Yet, when you speak to the people, I have one better. The kid's already diagnosed with autism. The do for the four-year-old vaccine booster. I had one didn't want to give it. Right. And I said, you can't go to school. They're not going to... It, no one thinks it caused it in the 12-month-old. The kid's already diagnosed... There's, there's no study you can find giving the vaccine after the diagnosis makes it worse. Yet that's in the folklore now in a few people's heads. Yeah. I don't blame the mothers in this case or the parents or the father, whoever it is that's making this decision. You know, they, they're concerned and they, they want to do what's best for their child. And a lot of times they're just miseducated from what they hear on TV or what, you know, friends tell them and other people tell them. And it's just, it's really a matter of educating. The more we can educate the public and we can explain to them in, in, in language that they understand exactly what the risks are and what's going on, I think they'll start understanding. And most pediatricians, especially in the state where I come, New York, actually don't even make money in vaccines. We're lucky we get, get it back. The cost is very high. For a practice of 2,500 patients, the cost of vaccines in a small practice, if you bought them today for every patient, you're money two and a half to $3 million wholesale. It's about $1,200 for a girl. I mean, $1,600 for a girl, $1,200 for a boy. They gave every vaccine while they stayed with you the first 18 years. Mm -hmm. This is not cheap. And I, I, I would hope that if you realize we're not making any real money on this, the only reason the doctor is doing it because he feels that maybe it'll prevent a horrible disease or two from yeah. happening in the community. How could you not do it? Yeah, and a lot of times the people who are, you know, making the decisions and teaching people that vaccines are, you know, shouldn't be given, whatever they haven't. I, I, I doubt they've seen children with measles or, or with encephalitis from different uh, viruses and that, that cause these disorders that what we're vaccinating against. 
Because if they've seen the consequences, even chicken pots, I mean, parents question, why do I need the chicken pots? We all had chicken pots, and it's such a benign disorder. Why do I need to vaccinate my child for chicken pots? People don't see the... The, the, the terrible consequences of chicken pots that people have as they get older, and sometimes, you know, not all children have an easy time with chicken pots. So, vaccines really are an important part of medicine today. I once had a kid with chicken pox. You're talking about it. was an 18 year old that got admitted in a hospital in Long Island mm-hmm. that had a carditis for it, a myocarditis. Sure. Yeah. And the kid almost died. And uh, we went back in the history very carefully, and uh, before the vaccine was actually available, and he never had it, and he got it at 18. And it's a problem because one hospitals don't want kids with chicken pox even admitted. Right, right. It's so contagious. And we had a big kid in intensive care, which was a big disaster. Mm-hmm. Thank God the kid pulled through. Uh, I think I had more of a nervous breakdown in the family. Right. Cause I mean, I think one of the best things to do is really, again, educate parents where a lot of times parents will say they don't want to give the vaccine because they would never forgive themselves if something happened to the child because they gave the vaccine. On the other hand, I, I don't think a, a parent would be very comfortable with themselves if a, ch- if a child ended up coming down with measles or one of these terrible diseases because they didn't vaccinate. So, and parents don't really see it, don't, don't realize that, you know, the flip side of it when they're making these decisions. So the good answer here is go to a reputable source, not some natural something website. Get the facts, and all those side effects are reported. Right. You can get copies of it. Mm-hmm. You can see how many doses were given and how many side effects there are. And if you have concerns, sit down with your pediatrician or your primary care physician and get the facts. Sure. And I, I can't conceive if you get the facts correctly, your decision will put your kid at risk. Right. I think I think the public are very intelligent people. I think people, parents are very intelligent. And as long as they receive the right information and education, I think they can make very healthy decisions for their children.